and how we are going to do that so i'll be grabbing this guy first for sure and these are going to be my values i the, the mesh is a bit of critical here i'll be talking about it in a second and legend parameters i think i can copy and paste this as well so i can copy this and let's start with something like i don't know minimum with zero because we'll be giving the uh results as percentage by the way i've changed this to 0 0.35 to 0 0.40 because above 0 0.34 sorry above 0 0.35 sorry above 0 0.40 is equals a disturbing right disturbing or intolerable as in our text here so i switched that for you to not spend time on watching that i did it in between so i can connect this as my legend parameters legend title is going to be a percentage as you know and global title is going to be clear. But one thing to be careful here. So since the glare is about the view, right? So when you look at something, if it's, too, it's, too, it's, if it's shining, you can't take a look at it. So it's basically glaring. So that we have to be changing this guy over here. Okay. And now what we are, we use this for meshing things, right? And if I go back to Honeybee, and if I switch back to, where is my Honeybee? If I recreate this uh, room thing, or grid thing with Honeybee Radiance, I'm sorry. I need to see this time Honeybee Radial Grid from Rooms, right? Because now what I'm doing is basically, if I switch back to this, and if I connect my, if I take this all off, okay, and put this in. So grid size the same, grid to floor, distance to floor is the same. Direction count, how many direction that we want to have on a piece of uh, view, a disk we are having. So I need to open my mesh edges. So is as default as eight. So we can keep it as eight. Okay, and I think I can add all this to these two to group. Starting vector is a 3D vector default. Is, I mean, this is okay to like, this is something you want to see as a starting vector. That's okay for now. Wall offset, we can put it as 0 0.5 to wall offset. Okay. And these are the meshes that we'll be using this time rather than the other ones. Because we want to see, we want to see the meshes as a result of this analysis. And I can take this as my wire display and hit it and connect this over here. And now if I connect these meshes to my mesh values, and if I preview this off, and if I, oops, Meshes to meshes, sorry, TA to values. Uh, mesh join component. So, okay, what we are seeing here, number of meshes are, oh, we are having a lot of different numbers of meshes rather than the results. So, if you join this mesh, meshes, let's see if we are having the same. Oh no, because you see, when I connect, even connect this one, we are still having the trouble. So what we need to do is we need to have the number of meshes that are equal to the number of results that we are receiving. Uh, therefore, we have to go back and fix things. We should be switching our grid as well, because now our grid is generating this amount of results, right? But for our model, what we need to do is I have to copy this paste it over here and the model is going to be the same but my grid now has way more sensors than it has with a normal value so it's going to take a bit of more time so what i'll be doing is i'll be putting this grid in for our model but i'll be making this false for a second okay so i'll be connecting this grid in 
I'll be connecting this model in this time. I can delete this as well. And number of directions, maybe I can leave it as, I don't know, like four, just to make things a bit faster maybe. But four is still uh, mesh one, but that's how many points we have. I mean, it's even better now, but let's have it at least, I don't know, like five maybe or six. And let's run the analysis. And as I run the analysis, I'll be, or let's go with the eight. That would make more sense, you know. Because I tried the other ones to reduce the computing time, but it didn't go well. So let me run this and pause my recording because it will take a bit more time. So as you see, it starts, but it's gonna take further time. So I'm, I'm pausing now. All right, so it took, like five minutes for this analysis so we can preview the mesh edges off and now what we're seeing is we are seeing some glare underneath this guy over here right so the problem with this is it starts with zero and it goes to 100 uh, it goes to 100 so if i make this 50 we are going to see some different results. I mean, I really don't like this color, so why don't we make it like heat sensation? I don't know what that is, but let's put it 10. So between this is this doesn't look well as well. We need more colors here, so why don't we put three? Yeah, maybe. So one, what are these? What these are meaning is basically. It's the like 100% of the time that is given, it's falling down or it's falling underneath the threshold that we are having. So there's no glare here. So there is no glare here, but when you look at here, this direction, you'll see some glare due to the uh, due to the location of the windows. And the same here and the same goes for these guys as well. So what this means is 100% of the time that this analysis is done, the glare is underneath of our threshold, which is 40%, right? So that's pretty much it. And we can just take these meshes and then say glare option three. Okay. And bake this. And maybe preview this off. And of course, like what we're going to do is we're going to group this. We'll be grouping this all and putting a tag called copy and paste. Sorry, not this one. I can't undo things now. Okay, let's undo. Yeah. Copy this and paste it and put this group and type clear. I'll be putting this down below because the next analysis will be we can use the ones that we already done uh, like I mean the, the legend parameters and everything so let's have some space here and that is that is maybe I can zoom in a bit further and that's pretty much it for this video sorry that's pretty much it for this video in the next one we'll be talking about daylight factor